been year veteran who was promoted last year and is the father of two young sons was pronounced dead at the scene. He is the 95th state trooper to be killed in the line of duty since the Pennsylvania State Police was founded in 1905. State police instructed law enforcement throughout eastern Pennsylvania to be on high alert following the shooting, which happened as one trooper was leaving and another was arriving. Police heightened security around the barracks. The gunman would likely not harm the general public, Mr. Noonan said, and instead could be targeting police officers. Police urged Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett, who wanted to attend Saturday's press conference, to stay in Harrisburg because of possible danger. Every attack on an officer of the law is an attack on our state, our country, and civilized society, Mr. Corbett said in a statement. The incident in Blooming Grove shows, once again, that our first responders face constant danger in order that the rest of us may live in peace and safety. Perhaps the greatest privilege of being the president of the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick is the task of selecting an individual or group of individuals to be the recipient of the President's Award. This year, I am proud to announce the recipient of the President's Award are the brave men and women of the Pennsylvania State Police. Gentlemen, we now know we now know that that manhunt continued for 48 days. Members of the state police and all local, state, and federal authorities hunted a gunman through dense forest, bone-chilling temperatures, and extremely long, exhausting days without concern for their own safety. And they did it with a dedication and class that personifies the Pennsylvania State Police. Before I award the the award to the, to the state police, I would like to mention that I invited Trooper Alex Douglas to be with, it, be with us tonight. And as of today, he was planning on coming, but he just didn't feel up to it. He recently underwent his 15th surgery since that horrible night six months ago. So I appreciate his efforts in trying to be here. At the president's table this evening, yes. At the president's table this evening is the station commander of the Blooming Grove Barracks, Lieutenant Chris Paris. And seated next to him is Sergeant Brian Venney. I would also like to recognize Father Thomas Muldowney Muldowney, who currently is the Vicar General of the Diocese of Scranton. Father Muldowney also serves as the Chaplain of the State Police and was a tremendous source of support for our men and women during a most difficult time. Thank you, Father Muldowney. And gentlemen, now to receive the award on behalf of the Pennsylvania State Police, Lieutenant Sean Jennings and Corporal Derek Felsman. Many of you may recognize Corporal Felsman he was Brian Dixon's best friend and gave the beautiful eulogy at his funeral. So please, gentlemen, come forward and receive this award on behalf of the Pennsylvania State Police. And I will just, I'll just read the award very quickly. The President's Award of the Society of the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick of Lackawanna County is presented to the Pennsylvania State Police in heartfelt gratitude for their selfless dedication, personal sacrifice, and steadfast protection of all citizens of this great Commonwealth. Tonight and always, we welcome you, we honor you, and we thank you. Bestowed on the occasion of the 110th dinner of the Society of the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick, given this 17th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2015, James J. Haggerty, Jr., President. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. President Haggerty, Vice President Biden, 
On behalf of Colonel Marcus Brown, the Acting Commissioner of the Pennsylvania State Police, and Lieutenant Colonel George Bivens, our Deputy Commissioner of Operations, Corporal Felsman and I gratefully and humbly accept this prestigious award. And I really can say nothing to add to what President Haggerty mentioned about uh, that terrible night back in September. But I want all of you to know that in spite of all the adversity that we have uh, faced over the last year of our, our department, um, each one of us goes to work every day committed to providing the highest quality of public safety in our communities. I know that there are all of us out there who each day respond to different calls for service, not knowing what the outcome could be. Even from our very humble beginnings in the academy, when we fill out forms naming beneficiaries, when we get to our troop assignments and we fill out paperwork indicating who we may want to have as a pallbearer someday, none of us ever think that could possibly happen. But for some of us, it does. For 96 of us, it has. But more importantly, the men and women who survive through their entire careers are committed over and over again to reporting for duty, to stopping that car, to responding to that call. And we do it with a commitment to one another and also to a commitment to all of you. And I think Derek would agree with me that there is no job we would rather have. We would trade places with none of you in this room. Well, with one possible exception, of course. <laughs> But in all seriousness, we, we really, uh, none of us take this job uh, seeking recognition, but I must say it is humbling when it comes, and, and we really truly from the bottom of our hearts do appreciate this, this honor. So thank you all very much. Thank you. And gentlemen, just, just another sad reminder of, of how these gentlemen and men and women of the state police put their lives on the line every day. Um, my friend Bob McGrath, a young trooper just out, of the, just out of the academy a few months, the day after the attack at Blooming Grove was investigating a routine accident on the expressway in Philadelphia, the Schuylkill Expressway, and he was hit by a drunk driver and he was nearly killed. And unfortunately, Bob isn't able to be with us tonight, but we were thinking of him. So thank you, Bob, for all that you do. Gentlemen, our next speaker this evening, Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey, will in a moment offer welcoming remarks to Vice President Biden. I first wanted to note that Senator Bob Casey is both a native son and a very loyal, friendly son. I also must make note of the fact that very rarely is Senator Bob Casey part of a gathering like ours tonight when he ranks as the second most powerful man from Scranton. In all seriousness, Senator Casey has been a staple at our dinner over the years, and we are always grateful when he can make the trip from Washington, D.C. to join us. We know the dinner sometimes conflicts with the Senator's voting record in the Capitol, of which he is rightfully proud. Senator Casey has a long connection to the Friendly Sons. Senator Casey's father, Governor Robert P. Casey, served as our Toastmaster that legendary night in 1964 when a young state Senator Bob Casey introduced the Attorney General of the United States, Robert F. Kennedy. Governor Casey later served as President of the Friendly Sons in 1977 and remains one of our most distinguished members. The Casey family also has a very close connection to the Haggerty family. My father and Governor Casey began their careers as law partners in the Scranton law firm of Casey, Haggerty, and McDonald, along with their great friend, Mickey McDonnell, who is here with us tonight. <laughs> hey, Mickey. 
Mickey. I think how proud Governor Casey and my father would be tonight. My father later served in Governor Casey's cabinet as Secretary of the Commonwealth and General Counsel to the Governor. It was the pinnacle of my father's professional career. As a result, my brothers and sisters and I have been friends with the Casey family for as long as I can remember. Please welcome here tonight with welcoming remarks for Vice President Biden, Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Honored to be here tonight. His Excellency Bishop Bambera, we're honored by your presence here tonight, Bishop. We have members of the clergy, too many to mention, but um, those on the dais, Father Keller, Monsignor Quinn, Father Quinn, and so many others who join us. I wanted to say, uh, just a word about the award that was just presented to the State Police. Uh, we are truly honored by their presence here tonight. And I remember a prayer my father offered in 1991 on the eve of the Gulf War. This was literally the night before an invasion, 1991. He said at that time, praying for our soldiers, he said, we pray for them, but we also pray for ourselves that we may be worthy of their valor to the members of the state police tonight and on every night, uh, we should whisper that prayer. God bless you and thank you for your service to our Commonwealth. <laughs> to, to Daniel and Jimmy, uh, your dad would be very proud tonight in so many ways. <clears throat> I, Daniel, I think he'd be a little surprised you were that funny, but. <laughs> But you did well. I asked him before, are you going to be funny? And he was very funny, and he managed to not mention me. I was so thankful that I was not, I was not the, I work in Washington. We're the butt of a lot of jokes. So, Daniel, thank you for that, for your indulgence. Kieran, I wish I could sing one note like you. We're honored that you're with us tonight. Congressman Cartwright, Senator Blake, uh, Mayor Cartwright, Mayor Prashinsky, who, who's here, Lieutenant Governor Stack, uh, distinguished members of the judiciary. Uh, federal, uh, county, and state. We're all uh, honored that you're here. My brother Pat, who's holding down my father's table. Pat, can you stand up so people know where our table is right there? <laughs> and of course, Mr. Vice President, we're so grateful you're here uh, tonight. I'm really grateful I got a ride up and a ride back. <laughs> so, Pretty soon we'll be saying top of the morning, but we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll be brief. But Mr. Vice President, we, we welcome you home again. And that's my, my role tonight was to welcome. I'm just gonna alter it slightly and I'll ask the indulgence of all the friendly sons. We can welcome him as we do so often, but tonight, tonight we can do something else. Let me suggest that on a night like tonight when we're so proud of this friendly son, uh, let's, let's offer a prayer of gratitude for who he is, what he has done for his country, and what he has given to public service. We thank him first and foremost <clears throat> what he's done for our country. Too many achievements uh, to, to mention here tonight, uh, but what he's done for economic security, for our national security. Uh, he's done just about everything a public official can do 36 years in the United States Senate, and now six years as Vice President. We thank him on a more human level because he is a wonderful example of a husband and father. We thank him for that example as a, as a public official, uh, doing so well as now husband, father, and grandfather, as he reminded us on the way up. But we do express gratitude tonight for public service and integrity, both uh, are, are noteworthy, both are worthy of our praise. I won't go through a long list of accomplishments in the United States Senate, representing Delaware and never forgetting Scranton, uh, and as Vice President. Too many to mention on a night like tonight. And it's difficult because we could do that. We could enumerate, we could list, 
we could uh, catalog or summary. But it's very difficult when someone has a public record like Vice President Biden to encapsulate in even a long list what he has meant uh, to our country, what, is, what he's meant to people who sometimes don't have anyone else fighting for them. Let me try tonight. And I won't use my own words. I'll use the words of someone who wrote a lot better than I did my father. 20 years ago, when he wrote a book about his life, he wrote this about uh, what I think is one of the best descriptions uh, of our guest of honor tonight. And it's about justice. He talked about the importance of a public official recognizing how important justice is. He talked about a passion for justice and a sense of outrage in the face of injustice. Here's what he wrote some 20 years ago. He was quoting, first of all, St. Augustine, that wonderful line that is so powerful even these centuries later. St. Augustine once said, without justice, what are kingdoms but great bands of robbers? And then he goes on to say in his own words, I believe the most important quality a person can bring to political office is a passion for justice and a sense of outrage in the face of injustice. If you can pass lightly over wrongs done to your neighbor, if you can shrug off the sufferings of others, especially children, then you are miscast, miscast for any position of public responsibility. And then he ends with words that uh, characterize his own passion. He said, you should return to private pursuits where less is expected of you. You're in the wrong business. Pretty tough words. But he held himself to that standard, and he believed it with all his heart. Fifteen years later, we still remember that. And a night like tonight, we can talk about several great friendly sons. Uh, I think it's a, it's a good description of the work of Vice President Biden a passion for justice and a sense of outrage in the face of injustice. No matter what it was, kids or the vulnerable, he stood up to dictators, but he would stand with those that he disagrees with to get something done for his country, to protect our people, and to move us forward into the future. So I'm proud tonight to welcome a son of Scranton, a son of Lackawanna County, and I would argue on the matter of justice, a proud combatant on the battlefield of justice, our Vice President, Joe Biden. God bless you and thank you.